So what happened was, because of this risk profile, which was complex and very difficult to understand, uh, the crisis started when interest rates began to rise eventually, and the adjustable uh, rate subprime loans started to default, because loans were given to people who could not actually pay these loans back. And then this started a sequence of things which, uh, which really has brought us to the stage we are here today. Uh, the holders of these uh, security CDOs and NBS, they incurred losses. Uh, one result was the prices of CDOs fell because nobody wanted to buy these uh, CDOs, these securities. So the market risk came into play. Then the issuers of the securities had to pay uh, CDS. The issuers of the CDS means the swaps, credit default swaps. They had to pay for the losses of the default. And what happened is the financial institutions which were holding the securities, both the uh, collateralized default obligations, CDS and C, uh, CDOs and CDS, they incurred losses. And they did not have enough capital to back these losses because these were un they were undercapitalized. And this uh, created a scramble to get funds from different sources. But of course, the, nobody was willing to lend funds because uh, they were not sure whether they'll get their money back. And as a result, the money market froze. And finally, what happened is from credit risk, the default, we had market risks and liquidity risks, which basically created the final systematic risk where all the economy has come to a standstill uh, in some countries. Now, this was a brief uh, introduction to the crisis, and now we go to the Islamic perspective. And I have quoted here two Islamic economists uh, on the crisis. One is uh, Dr. Omar Chakra. He has written a paper and presented it at, uh, at uh, this, uh, forum at Islamic Development Bank. Uh, he calls for a new uh, architecture, financial architecture. And he explains the crisis on inadequate market discipline, expansion in the size of uh, derivatives, and the policy of too big to fail, which encourages risk taking. Uh, Dr. Nijatullah Siddiqui has uh, stated that the, uh, the crisis is rooted in the moral failure that leads to exploitation and corruption. And he has a list of uh, four lists of things which has created this crisis credit uh, or liquidity crunch, overextended leverage, complexity of the products, and speculation and gambling or risk shifting. Uh, well, we are aware that if Islamic principles were used, this crisis would not have happened. And because it would have not allowed some of the instruments which were used uh, in this crisis. Among them, for example, as Professor Chapra has said, if profit loss sharing uh, instruments were used, there would be more uh, monitoring of where the money is going. Uh, Islam prohibits selling of debt, so the CDOs wouldn't have been there. Uh, there's prohibition, uh, prohibition on derivatives, the CDSs wouldn't be there, and there's prohibition in short selling. Short selling is used uh, to basically uh, induce uh, a run and downturn uh, uh, on failing, failing uh, firms. So all of these instruments are not available or are prohibited in Islamic finance. So the way we see the financial crisis happening wouldn't have happened if these principles were followed. And of course, there is a greed aspect to it, and uh, uh, most of the firms wanted to make uh, money and uh, went up into excessive risk-taking and leverage. Uh, and we know that uh, in Islam, this is not uh, encouraged. But, now comes the but. There is a difference between the principles and practice of Islamic finance. If you see what happened in the crisis, uh, it's basically three main points. The financial institutions operated in a deregulated environment, and financial institutions seeking higher rates of profit, the Greek component, and they went into excessive risk taking, and they used uh, innovative complex instruments to uh, get this profit. Now, my submission here is that if Islamic finance follows the same path, and we end up in the same situation. Uh, I feel that 
the factors of Islamic finance has been such that we are moving in that direction. And we see that the regulatory environment of Islamic finance is getting better, but it's not very uh, strong. And part of it is because it's the industry is evolving. It's very difficult to understand the risks in different instruments. Uh, as for the second part of the problem, uh, financial uh, institutions seeking higher profits, we see that you know it's a sort of moral, moral component which cannot be preached to Islamic financial institutions, and we have seen episodes of speculation uh, in, in especially the Gulf countries lately, where they were run on the stock market, and also if you look at the property market in Dubai, uh, people are saying that uh, it's a bubble which is kind of uh, in the making. And if you look at some of the financial innovations and, uh, or the uh, instruments which have been developed, uh, we see that they have features which created this crisis. For example, very few instruments are based on profit loss sharing. Most of them are fixed income assets, very close to the conventional products. Then we have Sukuk. Uh, we have Sukuk, uh, which basically is transferring uh, the, uh, the, or breaking the link between the financier and and uh, the user of funds. And then we have now recent development is the swaps which are coming in. And these swaps are basically, you can, the swaps are structured in a way where you can uh, transfer the returns of the assets you own to others and take the, return, the returns of other uh, assets uh, on yourself. And these other assets can be, the way it is structured, can be non-Islamic or haram assets. So basically, using this instrument, you could have taken the risk of the CDOs which were out in the